So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the, the, the great minds of our country, Kate Hoey and Ben Habib, saying the EU can't afford a trade war with Britain. I mean, this is, yeah, this is funny. This is, you know, I was talking to someone about it uh, yesterday and um, yeah, he started laughing. Then he asked me why I'm reading this stuff. And I'm like, man, I have to for my channel. He's obviously joking. But yeah, I have to read this stuff for the channel and try and break it down for you, for you all as best as I can. And it's a thankless job some days but um it's also very very funny when you read the arguments these people come up with and realize people actually voted for uh, kate hoey to to be an mp and ben habib to be an mep it's kind of funny the northern iron protocol has petitioned our country with a border down the rc i mean that's not true it's an internal border a trade border it's not been partitioned countries have internal borders finland being one of them but they wouldn't argue parts of finland have been partitioned you know ridiculous it has caused anger and despair. I mean, Northern Ireland, economically speaking, is doing better than um, the vast majority of Great Britain, London aside. So, again, that's not true. Um, their food prices are also cheaper over there. Every time any hint of reclaiming our territorial integrity is mentioned, the EU threatens a trade war. That's because we're not, you know, reclaiming our territorial integrity because we never lost it. How can you take back something you never lost? Kind of like sovereignty. We never lost sovereignty, but we claimed we got it back. And what have we done with our imagined sovereignty? Nothing. Um, so yeah, the EU threatens a trade war because we're breaching an international agreement that we came up with with them. We proposed it, we signed it, we ran an election on it, and now we're reneging on it. That's why they're threatening us with a trade deal, a trade war even. Now we're seeing more legal action over the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill championed by Liz Truss. I mean, are you surprised? You sound surprised. I mean, we we deserve to get taken to court over what we're doing. She goes, you do not see, you do not deal with a bully by ceding ground. And in this case, you know these two are absolutely correct. You do not deal with a bully by ceding ground. The EU are the ones, you know, the UK are the ones attempting to bully the EU here over the protocol, over the fact that, you know, the idea is the EU would have to, you know, Ireland would have to set up a hard border um, to deal with, you know, essentially the big hole in the single market. We're the ones being the bullies here because we're the ones not only threatening to breach the Good Friday Agreement, uh, sorry, not only are we the ones that are threatening to breach kind of the Northern Ireland Protocol, but also forcing the end of the Northern Ireland Pro uh, Good Friday Agreement. So I'm muddling up everything today. But point being is that we are the bullies in this case. So the EU not ceding ground to us is the right move. Sunak apparently included would prefer a to give up on sorting out the protocol than face a trade war. And again, I think the main reason he didn't want a trade war with the EU is because he's the Chancellor. And any trade war with the EU would have, you know, he would have had to... I don't even know how he would have solved such a mess, to be honest with you. There would have been a lot more borrowing um, of money from the Bank of England and a lot of other things happening. She said, uh, they say they shouldn't worry. The EU is in no position to enter a conflict. If it were foolish enough to start one, we would win. I mean, again, that's that's not true. We wouldn't win because we can't, we can't tariff EU goods because we're not checking them properly. We, we would struggle in a trade war. We would absolutely get decimated in a trade war. Let's be honest now. Our exports would be dead. Our exports would be dead. Um, our imports, it'd be a one-sided trade war again. Its economy is in deep trouble. And again, they act as if the EU is one one economy. That's not true. The EU is made up of a ho whole host of different countries. And which, you know, some of the economies are doing well, some aren't. Some of them are dealing with really, really bad inflation. Some aren't. Some of them are more reliant on the United Kingdom for trade. Some aren't. I mean, it's a ridiculous statement. Its economy is in deep trouble. The EU isn't a, an economy. Not really. Already massively over indebted before the extra borrowing required to fund lockdowns. I mean, so was the UK. Our, our debt to GDP was very high. It now faces rising interest rates and an energy crisis. So are we. You know, everything they talk about the EU here also applies to us. We are also facing rising int interest rates. Our interest rates, I think, are higher than the Euro European Central Banks. Uh, many EU member states are nursing debt burdens well in increase of... 100% of their GDP, which is true. But again, you know, debt to GDP is not just the only economic measure, which we'll talk about in a moment. You know, Germany's debt level is over 70%, and that's hilarious, which I'll tell again, we'll look at that in a moment. The UK has similar problems. I mean, our problems are arguably worse. The difference is we don't have to do things like rationing yet. I mean, Germany have asked people to kind of use less kind of um, gas and electricity. Um, they say, but our position is better because we have our own currency and a genuine central bank. I mean, us having our own currency is good, I guess, in this case, you know, for a lot of different reasons. And a genuine central central bank, I mean, is the European Central Bank a fake one? It doesn't really exist. You know, I think also Christine Lagarde, you know, she's not really in charge of anything. It's a hoax, a fake institution. 
Nearly half our national debt is owned by the Bank of England. Interest payments on this debt is affect the right hand paying the left hand. And if that's the case, then why do they scaremonger about debt so much then? You know, we could we could go into tons of debt to fund infrastructure and other projects, but it doesn't work like that, does it? Not really. At least if it does, it's just numbers on a screen at that point. So if we have a look, right, um, I found this website which looks at um, debt to uh, GDP, right? You see Germany, the third biggest economy in the world, their debt to GDP is 237%. No one's fear mongering about um, you know Japan above everyone else, even the United States, one hundred and seven percent percent of their GDP. You got some EU countries here, Italy, uh, Portugal, for example, but the United States debt to GDP is incredibly high. Yeah, where's the scaremongering around them? Uh, France at ninety eight percent. Let's see if we can find the United Kingdom. We're at eighty. 80% and Germany are below us. So why they didn't use France as an example, I don't know. You know, Germany's at the moment is 60%. You know, their de debt to GDP is far lower than ours um, when you look at it. So they've used an older figure here for some reason. Um, I just, I, I check, uh, maybe I'm using a different figure, I don't know, debt to GDP ratio. Maybe they're using something else, I don't know. But the fact is, our debt to GDP is far higher than theirs. So again, I don't get the fear mongering. Um, there is there is the energy crisis facing Europe. I mean, again, there's an energy crisis facing us. Germany relying on Russian fossil fuels. Its economy is under huge pressure as it deals with the twin effects of rising cost of living and having to cut ties with Moscow. And again, what the EU does have access to, which will really, really damage the UK, is the EU can talk to you know some of the um, suppliers, like Norway, for example, and say, look, you know, you're an EFTA member, etc. You know, can you sort us out instead of the UK? Um, we can offer you more money, you know, they can pay more, they have um, economies of scale, for example, there's a lot of levers that you can pull here. Um, the only the only issue is that right now, the UK is a major hub of importing gas and exporting it to the EU because of the way the pipes work. That might be an issue, but again, the EU don't have to necessarily tariff or do anything to um, British, you know, exported gas, for example. Gas is likely to be rationed over winter. I mean, that's probably going to happen. Hence, any threat of a trade war with the UK is is vacuous or facetious. So, because because Germany are struggling for you know gas, they're not going to start a trade war with us. That doesn't make any sense. They just won't put tariffs on gas. The EU won't do that. You know, it's just a ridiculous statement from ridiculous people. You know, they think, oh, Germany's struggling because of rising energy bills, so they won't do a trade war with us. No, simply not the case. If the EU did pick a fight, it would have to implement a customs border on the island of Ireland. See, this is the this is the bullying I was talking about earlier. That was some foreshadowing right there. Um, they're saying the EU are going to be the ones to break the Good Friday Agreement, doing the very thing it claimed would be unthinkable, of which the protocol would was pur pur purportedly enacted to prevent and prevent. And I think I don't think the EU necessarily. I could be wrong on this. I'll take an L, I'll take an L in the comments happily. I don't think the EU necessarily have to do a hard border in on the island of Ireland purely because right for. You know, for the reasons of the fact that the ports in Northern Ireland aren't the map, the hu the biggest ports, so there'll always be a limit to the amount of stuff the UK could try and smuggle via Northern Ireland um, without the protocol. So I, I, again, I don't think the EU would be in a position where they would have to, they would have to um, put a hard border on in, on the island of Ireland. And let's not forget, you know, where where are the, who's going to take the EU to the WTO over this? You know, we're the ones that look like the bullies here. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine any country taking the EU to the WTO over any breach of any agreements when it comes to most favourable nations. The UK, on the other hand, could face sanctions from a whole host of countries. Um, EU countries, for example, the Americans, um, New Zealand, uh, another one, I think even Japan mentioned they might, you know, F around and find out. Um, Japan even getting involved, um, potentially. So again, this, this argument here is ridiculous. Our government would not implement checks on our side of the board. And again, that causes problems with trade because of rules of origins. When it comes to trade deals, uh, rules of origins are normally a key part of any trade deal because it's a trade deal between two countries, not you know two countries and wherever you buy in from somewhere else. Ridiculous. Surely even the weakest within our government must see that now is the time to ditch it, the protocol. I mean, no, because we're in a very weakened position as well. You're acting like we're not mortally wounded right now. Let us start by accepting the truth. Parliament did not vote to partition the UK. I mean, it's true, they didn't, and that's not what happened. So the protocol's existence is illegal, and this is where it gets even funnier. That's not even true, because we don't have a partition. Countries have internal borders. I think there are even internal borders in Cyprus between the different sides, the Greek side and the Turkish side. Um, this, this argument is ridiculous. There's a trade border. You know, Northern Ireland is still part of the United Kingdom. Come on, man.
the government should rightly concede the judicial review. So what they're arguing, right? Their argument here, this is stu this is a really stupid one. The there's a judicial review going against the Northern Ireland Protocol, right? So what what you know these two are arguing is that the government should concede the judicial review and just say, okay, look, guys, we messed up. Um, the the Brexiteers are right here, and that would suddenly make the Northern Ireland Protocol illegal. Like what? I mean, it doesn't make sense. The court wouldn't make the ruling, you know. The, the court wouldn't make the ruling. It's the government doing it. I mean, again, it just wouldn't make sense. Surely someone else could take take it to judicial review and say the Northern Ireland Protocol is legal, um, and then cause absolute havoc by doing that. It's just ridiculous. I might have got a bit mixed up there, but the, the arguments they make here are stupid. You know, they say you know the uh, judicial review is due to be heard in November. It was difficult for Johnson to accept the protocol's illegality because it's his creation. But trust could and should do it. So what you're arguing is Boris Johnson broke the law. What you're arguing is Boris Johnson knowingly broke the law in that case, which is a huge allegation against the Prime Minister of this country. You know, trust will always be accused of breaking international law because that's what she will be doing if she follows through with the protocol bill and they actually use it. Instead of conceding the judicial review, the protocol would immediately be illegal. Sorry, instead by conceding the judicial review, the protocol would immediately be illegal. And again, that's their plan here. Get the government to concede on it and that will effectively get rid of the protocol. At least that's the way they see it. But again, I can see someone like the Good Law Project taking this back to court. Immediately, under international convention, it would then be the EU that would have broken international law. And, and get this, guys. The EU would break international law by signing an agreement in breach of a fundamental British domestic law. So somehow the EU would break international law because of British domestic law. How does that even make sense? I, I genuinely, this argument in yellow makes no sense. That because the UK have decided, oh yeah, actually the Northern Ireland Protocol is illegal, the EU would be in contravention of international law. What? Like, how does that? How does that make sense? Can anyone figure this out? Honestly, you know, in trust, both are both of us, you know, Ben Habib and Kate Hoey, and the people of Northern Ireland are trusting. And again, isn't it ironic that the people of Northern Ireland voted, you know, the majority of their MLAs back at the protocol? Isn't that surprising? Why would they elect a load of politicians that support the Northern Ireland Protocol unless, unless the people of Northern Ireland actually do kind of support it. I know it's a bit of a of a bit of pill to swallow for you guys, but maybe not everyone in Northern Ireland are ardent Brexiteers and lunatics. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not everyone in Northern Ireland is represented by the DUP. Oh wait, they're not because the DUP aren't even the largest party in Stormont anymore. At least they wouldn't be if Stormont was opened. Um, but the DUP aren't very big fans of it being open right now. But again, this article, load of rubbish from a load of like just. People have no idea. You know, I hope they get slapped by the Supreme Court. I just wish Lady Hale was there, the um, spider brooch judge. Um, she, she seemed quite interesting, but I, I know nothing about law anyways. But um, anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.